This is Internet Marketing. Brought to you by Site Visibility at sitevisibility.com. This is Internet Marketing. Now, before we start today, we have a request. If you're genuinely enjoying what we do here on the show, then please leave us a review on iTunes or your podcast app. It really helps us to grow our podcast and ensures that we bring you great marketing tips and advice each week. Now, today, I'm joined by Marie Page, co-founder and director at thedigitarati.com. Have I said that right, Marie? You absolutely have. Nice one. Sorry, it's a bit of a mouthful. Well, you're... Lovely to be here, though. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's, it's an absolute pleasure. And uh, where, whereabouts are you located uh, geographically? Uh, kind of northwest of London, uh, on the tube in a place called Chorleywood, which is actually extremely green and leafy and oh, isn't nice. very London-like at all. Yeah, yeah. I lived in a leafy London suburb, suburb for a few years. It was Kingston-upon-Thames, actually. It was oh, very, very nice good. and leafy down there. Is it a bit like Kingston-upon-Thames? Uh, less wet, less as wet. in less water. <laughs> <laughs> it's because the river doesn't get right next to it or through it. So um, I'm quite excited today because um, we're going to be talking about uh, Facebook and particularly the, the, the news feed and sort of basically how to get seen on Facebook without paying for ads. But before we get to that, just tell us a little bit about yourself and the digitarati.com. Okay, doke. Well, I started doing stuff online, really, through a couple of e-commerce businesses. I'm an old school marketer and PR person, really. So got very much self-taught in how to run something on the internet, drove traffic to that predominantly through social media. And having done that, I then set up the Digitarati with uh, a friend of mine who I was doing a master's with at the, t- at the time, a master's in digital. Mm. And um, I now work through the Digit- Digitarati both as a consultant and as a trainer. And my specialism really is um, social media marketing and Facebook in particular. Our bent is always towards training and client empowerment. So rather than that traditional agency model where we kind of hoard all the knowledge and say to clients well we can do all that for you we actually normally go okay well we'd like to coach you and help you do this so that next week next month next year you can do this yourselves without us doing it all for you Um, it's a slightly bizarre business model in that we are doing ourselves out of work but we are trainers Mm. and educators first and foremost now talking about facebook um, Mm -hmm. not everyone realizes do they that that facebook has a sort of an algorithm that determines what they see when they go onto that sort of home page let's talk about that first So without the algorithm, something like 1,500 pieces of content would be winging its way to us through uh, the newsfeed, which is the thing that you see when you look at Facebook on your mobile or your desktop. Mm. And that would be utterly overwhelming and would turn everyone off. So uh, what I spent three years at university on a master's doing was researching this algorithm and figuring out what of those 100,000 factors that goes into this algorithm, we could kind of tweak and adapt and utilize as businesses. So uh, um, I've put that into courses, I put that into a book, and I also do this kind of training and podcasting on it. So the idea of what I wanted to go through with you today really was some concepts as to how in general you could kind of beat the algorithm, do a little bit better, get more reach, because at the moment something like 9% of a Facebook page's content is seen by fans, and the yeah. other, well, the, the other 91% of fans won't see a thing that you are posting as a page uh, unless you're paying for advertising. Now, Mm. that's obviously an average and savvy pages and pages that are working hard at it can improve that reach figure above 9%. Now, let's get into the nuts and bolts. How does this sort of news feed algorithm work? And I suspect we'll probably be talking, (laughs) talking about this for the rest of the show, won't we? I think we will. It is quite complicated, mainly because there are these 100,000 factors. I've got a little diagram, which I guess you can probably give to people as a a download. Yes, I was very impressed. um, I have to say, listeners, I I was just saying before we started recording, I was congratulating Marie because um, she has the most um, exotic looking, um, because we we use a shared Google Doc for the questions. And it's like she's written a novel. It's, It's very, very impressive. And you've got this very nice picture, haven't you? 
Well, I, I, we, we got it professionally done. Um, it's partly that clickiness. And of course, it also means that people are sharing it and driving traffic back to our site yeah. as a result. So, But it also helps when, particularly when I'm training, to have a picture that people can look at and say, oh, yeah, that goes in that bit and that bit goes in that bit. But let's go through all of those. So we first of all, the goal here is to get visibility in newsfeed. You're never going to get 100% of your fans seeing it. But let's see if we can get it up to 30, 40, 50% of your fans without paying for Facebook a load of money. Yeah. So it, it comes into five different areas generally. It's to do with the interest in the page yeah. of the individual that's looking at newsfeed, the performance of the particular post that you are talking about, the performance of the page generally. So that's a historical thing as well as what's going on right now, mm. the type of content that you're posting and how recently you posted it. So right. we can unpack all of those things. Okay, so what should we start with? Uh, you mentioned interest in the page. Yep, let's look at that. So first of all, one of the key things here is how recently did the fan like the page? If I like something within the last few days, I'm likely to be seeing something that they've posted. Um, if I li last liked it, I don't know, a year ago, particularly if I've not engaged with any of its content, I've not hovered over it, I've not clicked through, I've not liked or commented or shared any of its content, that sent a signal to Facebook to say, look, she's really less interested in this page and its content than other pages. So yeah. we will downgrade that in the algorithm. So that's to do with interest in the page itself. I've heard this phrase, sorry to interrupt, but it, just, it, it seems right. kind of related to me. Is this... Um edge rank, which I, I seem to remember hearing a while ago and haven't heard again for a while. And I know that it's kind of relevant to the newsfeed visibility, mm -hmm. isn't it, in Facebook? Tell us a bit about that. Okie doke. So edge rank is a very, very old term that previously was used to describe the newsfeed algorithm. Facebook haven't used it themselves for a good number of years now. And uh, Adam Masseri, who's head of newsfeed, doesn't use it himself. So I don't use it. Yeah. But what I am talking about, some people would be describing as edge rank. So um, yeah, newsfeed algorithm is the commonly understood term to replace edge rank nowadays. Okay, that, that kind of makes sense. Now, the next thing on that diagram is is uh, post performance. How does Facebook measure post performance? So if a post is rapidly getting a lot of traction, that is sending a quality indicator to Facebook that this content is worth it disseminating more broad broadly. So uh, if people are clicking on it, sharing it, commenting, um, liking it, that kind of thing, the uh, it, Facebook's going, great, this is a really good piece of content we're going to show to other people too. And the opposite is also true. So if people are hiding it or reporting it, then Facebook immediately is flagging that as poor quality and will show it to fewer people. So the game we play as marketers is to create content that gets traction. So funny or cute content always wings it out here. That's why we see a lot of cat videos, because the algorithm is picking up that people are watching them and watching them to the end and sharing them and all the rest. So the Chewbacca mum or whatever else is doing the rounds this week. Uh, that's, uh, the, the, as we're recording this now, there's been a documentary doing the round on Asperger's from Chris, Chris Packham. Yes. And that BBC video is really doing the rounds yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Uh, as well as cute stuff, funny stuff, anything that's controversial will provoke reactions. And that could just be people, you know, these armchair warriors kicking off about it because they don't like it. But actually, as a tip for brands, if your brand kind of tone can cope with it, to push stuff out that's a little bit controversial is likely to help you in your uh, organic reach. And of course, just asking questions, particularly if you can genuinely get a response and it isn't just a tumbleweed moment, mm. uh, is worth doing. So little tips here. You might tag people in your posts that you know are fans of the page, you know, perhaps an ex an industry expert that is likely to be partial to actually responding to you. So um, that's likely to provoke engagement. And if you've got someone that's really well known, well, how wonderful that you can tap them up for some um, some engaged content on your page. Yeah, asking questions is really powerful, isn't it? Now, what about type of content that we post? I mean, for example, you know, a lot of people believe that video posts perform well, whereas sort of posts with links out of Facebook perhaps perform less well. Is this true? What's your experience of this? Yeah, I mean, it changes over the years. And there was a time when anything that had a photo on got way more reach than anything else. So, of course, as marketers, we just gained it. We did as um, uh, good old Seth Godin says, we broke it. Um, uh, so, so Facebook doesn't really favor pictures, particularly now. Video is the 
big thing and has yeah. been for a long, long time now. Um, what I would say is that you need to upload stuff natively to Facebook rather than just putting a link into YouTube. Yes. If you do a YouTube link, of course, Facebook doesn't like YouTube. They're massive competition for them. Yeah. So um, it'll just treat it as a link. So let's just think about other types of content here because you've got the plain status update that has is just plain text. You may have some emojis or something in there, but you've not got an image. You've not got a link in there. Uh, so you've got plain status updates. You've got photos, which is an image, obviously. Videos. Uh, live video, which I put into a slightly separate category. Certainly when that was first rolled out, that was very much favored by the algorithm yeah. and is still favored slightly more than, um, than a non-live video. You've then got link posts and a couple that I call kind of like Cinderella content types, really. Um, Facebook events and Facebook offers. And okay. these are really underutilized types. And partly because we like novelty as people, we our eyes tend to be drawn to them like, oh, it's an event. Oh, am I interested? And of course, there's lots of opportunities for engagement, you know, to say that you're interested or that you, you're going. And similarly with offers. So lots of opportunity, really, for brands to use these unusual content types which really do get a little bit of a boost organically in the algorithm now really what about uh par we talked about post page performance what about past page performance so we talked about how posts are performing so that's that that particular post that you've posted now how does the performance of the page impact on your likelihood to get your stuff seen in the future well a page that facebook knows is super popular is going to be favored by the algorithm because you've got lots and lots of quality indicators that people are interested in this page mm -hmm. and are wanting to see a lot of it so if you've posted a lot of tumbleweed stuff in the past if you've posted a lot of begging stuff that has perhaps trigger words in and we can talk about trigger words a little bit in 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 a minute if you'd like yeah definitely um so stuff like that if it's if you know if your stuff is all really promotional and salesy all of that is going to get you kind of negative points in the algorithm so you need to focus on really good quality engaging content and get your performance up a little bit and if it is really in the doldrums because you've maybe you've inherited something from a really duff social media manager in the past and you're new in post, what can you do? Well, start producing lots of different types of content, great videos, some live videos, some really sticky stuff that people are going to want to share. And perhaps at that point, put a little bit of money into boosting content. So you're re-engaging your audience and then sort of you're, you're, you're a little bit more up on the unpacking order again. Tell us more about these trigger words, Marie. <laughs> okay. Before so I forget. As marketers, we try and game the algorithm all the time. So what are we going to do to get more traction? We're going to say, oh, please, will you like this? Or please, will you share this? Or please comment here? Um, and that those kind of words, Facebook's really, really alert to that people are asking to share this post. And they're going to go, no, we're going to downgrade that piece of content because people are begging rather too much. Yeah. So uh, you need it, it's amazing how when you're writing as a copywriter, you can, we want to to share with you an idea that we'd have blah 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 oh bucko i've put the share word in and facebook is gonna pick that up so do make sure that you're not using those words like comment like or share yeah. um even things like thumbs up i think potentially could be showing and conversely words like congratulations as we know nowadays is showing up in red when we post that as an individual i think anything like that is like celebrating an anniversary is likely to be pushing it up i talked as well a little bit about promotional stuff Facebook's very good at picking up whether your your item that you're talking about is something that's promoting um, a business or a product. Yes. So any language that seems to suggest it like that buy or sale or discount or offer, all of those things are likely to be trigger words. Now, the last thing on that diagram, Marie, I, I think you call it recency, which is the age of a post. How does that sort of uh, fit into the whole picture? Yeah, so the more recent a post is, the more likely it is that it will be shown. So the lesson here is don't post when your fans are not online, because by the time they are then back on Facebook, uh, Facebook's saying, oh, well, we're not going to show them that. That was posted several hours ago. Yeah. So have a look in your insights and see when the golden time is for you. Then the vast majority of pages, this will be in the hours from people getting or well, waking up in the morning. We all look at our news feeds when we're in bed, don't we? And then um, through to them getting to their desk, particularly if they're on a kind of commute. And then maybe again in a sort of lunch break, again after work and 
quite a big peak in the evenings. Now, this will obviously change if you're working internationally. So you've got fans spread geographically across the world yeah. and you're going to need to think about if you're posting, say, at night, I don't know, 8 a.m. UK time, it's not going to work terribly well for an American audience. So you might want to look at the golden window of, say, 4, 5 p.m. UK time, which will get your American customers who are getting up or sort of early into the day. The crucial thing really is to look at where when your customers are online. And also remember that brands are normally posting Monday to Friday, partly because agencies don't like working at weekends very much. And they need to be around to respond to whatever's going on on social sites. So think about whether Saturdays and Sundays might work for you particularly if you've got people available or you know you're just happy to sort of cover it off with your phone whilst you're um, off on the weekend so they can work extremely well and things like I mean, I'm planning a Black Friday campaign at the moment for one of my pages mm. it's going to be hugely busy in news feeds all of that week leading up to Thanksgiving and that Black Friday weekend and Cyber Monday so be prepared for a really really busy news feed then and you may well have to pay and the ads will be more expensive then as well so post when it's quiet Mm. rather than when it's um, going to be super busy. And if a guru tells you there's a magic time for posting, uh, I would not believe them because it's going to be what's right for you and your brand. And frankly, if all brands go with whatever guru is saying you need to post at, I don't know, <laughs> seven o'clock in the evening, then it's going to suddenly be very busy, isn't it? And it's therefore going to be a rubbish time to be posting. Yeah. We've talked about quite a few factors here, this uh, sort of like this sort of array of of, of different parts of the algorithm. If you could distill it down, what would you say the big sort of reach killers would be, Marie? Anything that Facebook perceives as being promotional, yeah. anything that it perceives as gaming the algorithm. So something that's very clickbaity, you know, that has an intriguing title and you click on it, you think, oh, that was it. And then you click right off. It's like a, it's like a bounce on a website. Yeah. Facebook knows exactly how much time people then spent on that link and then came back. So all of that will be kind of downgrading. Uh, I've talked about the trigger words. Yeah. Uh, Facebook will index any new material in Open Graph and it knows when you're repeating the same content again. That's not to say it's not good to sometimes repeat content. I uh, shared a post a couple of weeks ago that the Independent newspaper had put out, I think 18 months ago, it was all sick about um, context collapse on Facebook. Yeah. And I was noticing they are still pushing this out. I've seen it come into my newsfeed probably six times in those 18 months. It's evergreen content and it's working really, really well for them. But by and large, I would avoid being very repetitive about content. And I certainly wouldn't be sort of repeating the same thing within a very short space of time. You, mm. you see, it's, it's not Twitter. It's not a place where you're, you should be putting stuff out multiple times a day, repeating it because you know people aren't going to be seeing it because they're just on Twitter for a very short time and they don't scroll right back. Yeah. With Facebook, you do tend to see that being quite repetitive. Um, I, Facebook itself doesn't like anything that looks like a meme. So an image with you know text at the top and the bottom, it's it will scan those and will will know that they're quite meme like. So particularly if they're coming from a page, they're unlikely to be sharing it. If you're still seeing that stuff, it's because your friends are sharing it, and Facebook has a sort of friends and family first policy. Yeah, it's actually top and bottom. You talk about text actually in the image, aren't you? Yeah, you yeah. know, the kind of classic meme thing. So yeah. you've got, you know, a Game of Thrones meme and the text is something's coming, you know, that yeah, that, that yeah. kind of thing. You know, the classic meme, really. <laughs> so here's the, uh, the, the $10,000 question, really. If you could sort of compress everything we've spoken about today in a sort of like a, a checklist for our listeners to sort of mentally go through when they're about to post to Facebook and it had, I don't know, three or four items on it, what would, what would be on that checklist? Well, I think strategically first and think – are we producing a variety of content here? So have we got a selection of video, live video and images and uh, links? You know, are we asking questions? Are we doing long form and short form posts? So are we mixing it up nicely? Are we thinking about that algorithm? And if you go back to my diagram, thinking about all of those different things, are we posting at the right time? Are we doing something that's really aging? Are we avoiding uh, trigger words? Is, is this content going to get people talking? Is it written in a way that engages and inspires people to do something, whether that's share or click or react in some way? Um, and also you may, I know this is all about getting good reach for zero budget, but you may well also, particularly with the content that you really want to be seen, particularly perhaps for something that is a little bit promotional, an event you're doing or something, 
allocate a few pounds, a few dollars to a boost or to an ad of some description. And for goodness sake, if you're going to invest in that, invest in training your staff so that they are doing that advertising, that boosting well. So they're targeting wisely rather than targeting people and demographics and countries that really aren't of relevance to them. Well, Marie, thank you so much for coming on. How can our listeners find out more about you? Well, uh, we have an ultimate guide to Facebook marketing, which is a freebie, which is kind of our checklist, really. It's 10 things that you need to do right now on your Facebook page. And we've got a nice kind of short form URL for that. So if you go to getultimateguide.com, yeah. getultimateguide.com, uh, you can just sign up and get that. And that's a that's a freebie. And it'll also um, take you through a nice little funnel marketing program where you'll get a few other offers and that kind of thing. If you are interested in a little bit more training or or uh, input into Facebook marketing. Thanks a lot, Marie. And thanks to our listeners for listening. These show notes are in the usual place, sitevisibility.com forward slash I am podcast. Um, if you enjoy the show, please leave a review, as mentioned at the beginning of the show. Um, if you've got questions or suggestions for future topics, then the email is podcast at sitevisibility.com, or you can tweet at sitevisibility. Um, also, remember that we have a site visibility group on LinkedIn. So thanks again for listening. That's all from me, Andy. And it's all from Marie. Goodbye. Thank you very much for having me. And we'll see you next time on Internet Marketing. Marketing.